Hello again. This is the um, Gat air pistol that I bought from a boot sale last summer for five pounds. Uh, most of you know these are made by a company called Harrington in Woking in Surrey from 1930s to 1990s. Uh, the company closed down when the old man died. This isn't one of those if you look in closely. SR Industries Incorporated, Huntingdon, something around Boulevard, California, USA. So this has come 6,000 miles to end up 80 miles from where it used to be made. I've got this card down because it's uh, against a black background. Otherwise, there goes the GAT J101 4.5 millimeter. If you're buying one of these from a boot sale, things to look for. Make sure there's no real marking on this um, plastic insert there. Um, make sure there's no dents or anything in this part because that is actually the compression chamber. Make sure the trigger works, which it does. Because when you cock it, that holds on to the back of the That part there, the breech, is actually your piston, and that goes forward and squeezes the air, which goes into through a little hole in the barrel, presses a power pellet out. If you unscrew that, um, make sure it's got that spigot on it, because that's what pushes the pellet past the hole. Uh, the old Harrington ones used to have a fibre washer around there, which always went missing. And basically, that's about it. Simple as. Now, I'm going to put you back up here so you can see. <coughs> Alright. Where to start? I used to have one of these as a kid. Mine was a silver one. First thing that went wrong was the spigot went missing. So I used to have to push a match in. Leave the match in there while I screwed that bit in. And then that bit went missing. So I found a screw that was nearly fit and used a match. And in the end, uh, the seals gave up and there was like bits of string coming out of there. Eventually it um, just seized up. It made a very satisfying clang as it went into the bottom of the, uh, the dustbin. Proper dustbin, not one of the weird things we got today. So you push your pellet in there, screw it in. Now, if you've had any of the um, air gun magazines in the UK lately, nearly all last year, Every other issue, there was somebody writing in nostalgic about the gap, whether they could get a new one or not. And one of the uh, editors said one of the most important weapon, air weapons of the 20th century, simply for the amount of people you got into air gunning. And I'm reading these thinking, you know what? Mine was a hateful thing with absolutely no redeeming features whatsoever. So when I saw this one, I had to buy it and check it out. I've got a target five metres away there, and I can't hit it. It's terrible. The trigger is awful. So, um, I don't know. This one goes about, if I throw it off down there, you might be able to see the pellet go. I didn't see it go. It goes about 25 metres. One I had went about 20 me uh, 25 feet. Um, So I don't know, it's a weird thing. People used to say these were suitable for children because they're low powered. Also, if you shot it, anything you shouldn't do, you probably weren't gonna hit it. Some people say they were cheap. I don't think they were particularly cheap. Uh, they're certainly out of my pocket money range. I was only getting half a crown a week. It's two and sixpence, 12 and a half P in today's money. So I'd have saved everything for eight weeks just to Earn a, save a pound to buy one of these. I'd have had to save for nearly three years. It's 
going without sherbet fountain, ten cadets and the box of matches, you know. Um, so you had to get one through pester power, which I did. I still haven't hit it. Which I got one for Christmas. Mine was a silver one. Uh, there's probably all sorts of different versions through the years. I suspect somebody's got all of them to collect them. If that's you, just do a little video and show us. I'd be interested. I hit it. I hit it. <laughs> so pleased. <laughs> anyway, there are rumours that the company that makes them now, or did make them, is thinking of bringing it back through uh, popular demand. Who's doing that? Is that you? Stop it. If you do, buy one by all means for your own enjoyment to uh, have a bit of nostalgia, relive your misspent youth. But don't buy one for your kids or your grandkids unless you want to teach them the meaning of the word disappointment. See, I've hit the, hit the pellet trap once. Oh, they used to fire corks. So you, that's one reason you could give them to your kids, just so they fired corks. Um, they were the first thing that went missing. Um, you think, okay, we'll use a wine cork. Well, wine cork's too big, so you have to cut it down, which is never very satisfactory. And in the 60s, we, the working class people didn't drink wine. We didn't start drinking wine until the 1970s with um, Matthias Rose and um, Blue Nun leading the way. So, but they would fire bits of stone, twigs, cocktail sticks, things like that. Um, and then they'd fire darts, which was the next thing to be lost because you fire it at a tree and miss. They would also fire BBs. Now, BBs weren't very popular, never been very popular in Britain, and they still aren't. I ought to do a video extolling the virtues of them. I couldn't get BBs where I lived, so we always used pellets. But BB, I just tried it just now, first time ever. And it just rolls out the barrel, so you just drop it in there. And it, it goes, it goes about 20 metres. That was aiming up as well, so. Still very, not very powerful. I'm not going to fire it at the target in case it bounces back. I haven't got my safety glasses on. Go on. So, there we have it. The Gat air pistol. A blast from the past. I think I've covered everything I wanted to say. So, one last one. Oh, the trigger, because that's, that takes about 40 pounds to um, press in. Obviously, it's not very child friendly. But what we used to do out around the fields, scrunch up your toes and your boots, push down on your boot. You get little rings cut out of your boots after a while. Also, the, that sear, the trigger sear, when it comes down, when you pull the trigger, it actually comes back against that, um, the, the breech there. So you're actually pulling against that 40 pounds. One last thing, we'll have a look and see what we get. That's five metres. Hitting it to the left. Because where you're pulling it, you're pulling the trigger, you know it's hard, so you, when you pull it, it goes like that. So your wrist is fighting against it, and as soon as the trigger goes, you're pulling it to the left all the time. Horrible thing. Alright. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, it doesn't cost anything. It means a lot, though.